Tonight on Life on the Rock, we have Dan Federica from Scythian. We'll see an American Catholic hero video and much more. Welcome to Life on the Rock. Tonight, our guest is Dan Federica. He's Ukrainian born. He plays with his brother and they're part of a band called Scythian. And they've blended Celtic and Eastern European and even Appalachian music to produce a very high energy kind of dance music. They've had tremendous success in Ireland, here mm -hmm. in the United States, performed at many venues. So he's gonna share with us tonight his faith and the role it has in his music. Scythian. The word means Ukrainian nomad. <laughs> That's really interesting, but their music is really inspiring, but it is high energy. And uh, they've done a lot of great work. They've done, raised a lot of funds with the Little Sisters of the Poor and at World Youth Day, they played for over 100,000 people. We're now going to an American Catholic hero video with Brother John. On the evening of June 5th, 1944, U.S. forces were preparing for the largest airborne and amphibious landings on the Atlantic Wall in Normandy, also known as D-Day. So in the early mornings of June 6th, of 1944, thousands of men from the 101st Airborne and 82nd Airborne parachuted into hostile territories They're behind enemy lines that would flank those who were coming up the beaches on Normandy or later on that morning. And here we find a Franciscan friar by the name of Father Ignatius Maternerski, who was a chaplain who served in the 82nd Airborne, but he was also a Franciscan friar uh, prior to his service in the military with the conventional friars. He did his novitiate at St. Joseph's Novitiate in Ellicott City. But during the war on, Ju on June 6th, on D-Day, he had parachuted in, in France in a town near Picoville. And it was there that after his landing, he put on the chaplain and insignia and started assisting those who were wounded soldiers, uh, even frightened villagers, uh, even to the enemies, even to those who had been shot, those who were German. And it was during this conflict that he decided he would go across to this no man's land and on to the other side and make negotiations with the German medics to build, to, to establish a field hospital. And by the accounts, it seems like that was going to go through. But it was on his return back to the, the U.S. side that somebody had shot him in the back of the head. But it was his silent witness of his sacrifice, of his humility, and the goodness of his heart to serve both those that he was fighting for and those that he was fighting against. In the true spirit of serving both God and country, we find this embodied in the life and virtues of Father Ignatius Matanerski. Dan, welcome to Life on the Rock. And you're a part of an interesting band, a very energetic band called Scythian. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's kind of like a Celtic folk, but a kind of an Irish, kind of a melting pot of a band. But can you tell us a little bit about the band and the work you do? Well, yeah, we are. Uh we're kind of an accidental band. My brother and I started um, out as street performers mm -hmm. in Old Town, Alexandria, Virginia, and uh, a bunch of Ukrainians playing Celtic music. And then we kind of got almost pushed from behind, and now we're a headliner on the Irish festival circuit. Okay. But also a name in the bluegrass and Americana circuit as well because we grew up in the Shenandoah Valley. Okay. And we kind of stand out particularly as a band that engages the audience uh, it gets everybody up every yeah. show and dancing. Okay. So we're kind of got a got a um, kind of a, a reputation for being the the fire starters at a festival. 
a little barnyard dancing. <laughs> Oh, exactly. Yeah. So we got we got we got the fiddles. We got you know accordion, upright bass, yeah. electric bass. Good old, good old time music. Yeah, I love the I love the sound of a fiddle, and there is something unique about it. It's just kind of an old world sound that I think connects to a lot of cultures, even in America and all, a lot of just European cultures as well. But how what got you started into music? How how did you and your brother get involved? My mom, she was. Um, she went to Juilliard and was oh, wow. like one of the top concert pianists there. Okay. And uh, she was living the, the New York, you know, uh, high life of all the stars, you know, rising stars. And she was just starting her career as a concert pianist. And then she kept on, as she's walking the streets of New York, she would just, it would, it, an incessant whisper in her mind, uh, the, the gospel verse, what profit did a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Huh. And it wouldn't leave her. It was haunting her. And she just realized that um, the life she was being promised, wouldn't be good for her soul. And so she gave it all up. Mm. And she had t 10 kids instead. Wow. And so she taught all of us our instruments, and we actually used to travel the United States playing for nursing homes or like uh, Catholic conferences as a classical music band. Okay. So, and so, she, so she taught us how to be a band. Okay. That, yeah, you got a family environment there. Where everybody's playing an instrument, but what is your role in the band? What what instruments do you play in particular? So I play the guitar and the accordion, which okay. is I'm trying to bring the accordion back. Right. Uh, <laughs> and and my brother and I were the founders. He plays the fiddle, the mandolin, harmonica, and we all sing. Okay, all of y'all sing. Everybody in the band kind of chimes yeah, in. Okay, a lot of melody. Four piece. <laughs> oh yeah, and the harmonies as well. So we just kind of a. Uh, um, we kind of take people on a musical trip around the world and we're always changing gears. So they, they can never kind of get too comfortable of like, Oh, this yeah. sounds the same. Um, but we kind of learned it from our mom. Um, you know, growing up playing since we were little, she always said, this is always for the glory of God. Oh. And it has nothing to do with you. If you were given a gift, it's, it's purely because God wants you to make other people happy. Okay. Um, it's, and it's an act of service. So playing music is an act of service. And so, we would start every show before taking the stage with my mom, and she would pray that it was for his glory and that our egos get out of the way. And um, and so we kind of remembered that with our band, and I think that's kind of the general spirit of the band because we've been doing it for so long. Yeah. The thrill of, of having people watch us, and it's not about – the ego is almost – it's not there it because my mom – It can get in the way, yeah. <laughs> I, I, she, she'd tell us, like, I was in Juilliard. I saw uh, what ego would do. Oh, yeah. And that, and it, this isn't about you. If yeah. any gift that you were given, whether you're a janitor or a musician, you you owe it to God to give a hundred percent. And yeah. so a lot of the, a lot of our newspaper write-ups are that people. It seems like we're playing for you know thirty thousand people in Wembley Stadium. Yeah. When there's a few hundred, wow. but that's because my mom, she said, is like if one soul shows up, if one soul changes their schedule to be there for your show, you give you owe it to God and to them. To give 110 percent yeah do you find it challenging to integrate faith into the work you do or is it just kind of actually a natural harmony and just actually a more easier way to express yourself or evangelize i find for me it's not so hard but um what that means is harder for people to understand like when yeah. we first initially started the fact that we weren't singing explicitly christian music we would mm -hmm. get kind of hate mail yeah. Like you've been given this platform and you're ashamed of Christ. Like why are you not singing the word of Jesus? Yeah. But we weren't we weren't called to that. We were felt it, we felt a song in our heart which was folk music. Yeah. And so we felt we had to stay true to what we were called to. But also just realizing it is, you know, Jesus said, you know, what, you know, what comes out of a man is what's really important. And you know, you don't have to explicitly say be saying Jesus, but we realized that uh, if we tried to live a good Christian life, our authentic Christian joy never failed to shine through. Like, we got booked, we, we closed out the main stage at World Youth Day in Sydney, and the nun I, I was like, that booked us, I said, listen, just so you know, we're not, an, we're not on the Christian circuit, we're just an Irish band. And she says, your joy is so evident, it's, it's exactly what I want to have at World Youth Day, yeah. Christian joy. That's interesting. And, and so we find that we live, um, the explicit part of our faith at during the autograph sessions, um, 
our autograph sessions are typically between one and two hours. And we realized there that there's such a hunger to actually be seen, to look yeah. at someone and affirm their dignity just because they are. Not yeah. We don't know anything about them. And a lot of the emails we get from fans afterwards, like, I was going to commit suicide after tonight's show. Mm. Um, but because the way you looked at me, I realized that I had something in me. Yeah. And, and so I, I didn't kill myself. Like, I, we've literally had that email. And we're not doing anything special. We're not, like, preaching. But I realize now, just these days, in a post-Christian society, just to be joyful and connected to Christ and trying to look at, at people with the eyes of Christ is a very powerful form of evangelization um, that we take for granted as Catholics. But a lot of the world, especially with social media and scrolling, and mm-hmm. that there's a, star- there's a starving culture, and especially if there's any young people out there, yeah. don't ever take it for granted what you've been given. Uh, just a smile and, and being kind to somebody can, can be their experience of Christ. Yeah. And what that, that they're trying for. You know, I think, too, with music, it's just kind of one of those areas where it brings people together, like food or even just sharing a drink. But just there's something about music that people identify with. And I just remember my own experience. You know, I had my own circle of friends. But then, you know, you connect somebody. Maybe you play the guitar and, you know, you, you form a friendship. And that's, I think, how a lot of bands start is just there's there's just, just the love of music. And uh, you were kind of touching on this earlier, but I think, too, um, with music, just kind of keeping up with the artistry and the, the creativity, because you don't ever want the music to just kind of just become repetitive, but you're always kind of looking for a new way to kind of give it new life. And how does that affect you as a musician, even in the work you do? Well, it's definitely it's a great analogy for life, yeah. because if you're married, you got to be careful that it's not just... <laughs> Going in. If you have children, you have to be careful not to take them for granted. If you have a job, you have to be careful. You, you, it's up to you to find that romance. Yeah. And and as a musician, you have a, a specific calling in your life to, in a sense, invite people into the romance that you experience of the magic of, of beauty. And my mom uh, and beauty of music. My mom always said that beauty it was is what was going to save the world. Hmm. And if we played beautiful music. It, it would be the the thing that opened up hearts in order for God to get in there. So basically, if we did our jobs, you know, well, hearts would be open to be touched. And we really do see that, like amazing friendships springing up, people that ne- have never met but now are like fast friends because they were shoulder to shoulder at, at our show. And the audience is a huge part of our yeah. show. We we try to break down the barrier because a lot everything about the music industry is like artists are are up here, and you're down here, peon. Um, and music has become kind of like a, an idolization. It's kind mm-hmm. of like a pseudo-religion. Yeah. yeah. Whereas mu- folk music was really designed to let people forget their worries. It was like a Sabbath. Forget your worries for a few hours so that you can go back to your normal life, relieved and joyful. Mm. And that was the original whole point of folk music. But somehow the industry has taken it and tried to you know, make the rock star charisma. And so our whole goal as a... Um, musicians is to kind of break that down yeah. so we started our own music festival um, kind of trying to keep all this philosophy in mind and it's a mainstream it's an award-winning mainstream roots music camping festival just an hour west of dc it's called appaloosa okay we realized there was not, there was nothing there but we realized that growing up we grew up in this shenandoah valley that we never we never had other musicians to inspire us yeah so there's a strong workshop component. Like we make a stage where anyone on the big stage is on a little stage where the kids can ask them questions and realize that they could do it, but also that they're part of the show. Mm-hmm. And um, it, the result is very magical. We'll have like four or 500 kids come a day yeah. for a festival. Okay. And, uh, and in that way, it's, a, it, it's kind of like creating a community, which in our mind is the whole purpose of music is to facilitate community. And that's why our motto as a band, Percipient, is uh, music among friends. Oh, okay. That, that's, yeah. that's a good witness there. And I kind of want to, earlier you were talking about with the ego. I think, again, you kind of touched on it. With, with music, sometimes you get kind of an ego. And I know, to t- I know a lot of times with bands, there can be a lot of friction, disagreement. A lot of times where the music's supposed to be headed. Uh, how does your band deal with all of that? What are kind of some of the steps of really kind of 
bringing peace into the band? Um, that's definitely one of the largest problems. And we've been around, this is our 18th year, so we've seen so many amazing bands break up because of yeah. ego. Uh, but then again, I want to just, just tip my hat to my Christian faith. Uh, it, we're all Catholic in the band. And, you know, we're all from large families. I'm one of 10. Our drummer is one of 10. And my brother, of course, is with me, one of 10. Yeah. Uh, you can, we kind of, uh, and Ethan, our bass player, has four of his own already. Um, so we, we have a, uh, three of us are married, so we have wives okay. that can put us in our place if the ego gets too big. Yeah. But it, but it rarely comes to that, it's, and it's mi- mo- mostly because we all realize that there's a mission is, is the music. And um, if it's about, if it ever becomes about us getting like recognition, then we've already lost our mission. Yeah. And so there's kind of like this ego, like uh, ego check. Like, Hey, whoa, whoa, what's, what's your problem? Like, what do you think we're about? We're not about, this is the, my time to shine. And it, it's not that we don't struggle with it. Like everyone wants to, yeah. I wrote this song. I would, love, I would love to play this song since I wrote it, well, that song isn't at service of making it the best show it can be because it's a slow song. We need an upbeat, happy song. And so you're constantly, um, I didn't get married until recently, um, uh, and it was a very good practice for me to be ready for what you encounter in any vocation of having to check your desires for the greater good. Yeah. I think, too, and, you know, with music, when you're rocking or just in the moment, there's a lot of noise and stuff like that. But I think even too, just listening to the other members, to, and you can apply that to your family life, business, to living in community, but learning really how to just communicate to each other. Because I know a lot of times, yeah, there can be a real clash there with egos and just conflicts and personality and all sorts of things that just kind of make it difficult. And I think if you're in a band that you don't like, that would be very difficult, <laughs> you know, and it's, there's a real struggle there. So, I mean, and the thing is, it's a real struggle whether you're, whether it's a, a big issue in your life or not, because it always creeps up. It's just in any relationship, there's always, yeah. you realize if you, I just got married. Wow, I didn't know I was so selfish. Yeah. So whenever you're in a community, as, as a brother, I'm sure you realize this when you joined, you're like, wow, there's all these, there's so much of my desires that I have to learn to, to let go of. Yeah. And so it is kind of living in community in a way, especially since we're all Catholic and we're Mm -hmm. very intentional in what we do. Like even our song choices, like when we're writing music, we made a decision to keep it. We have some, we have an electric bass and we we have a drum kit. But for the most part, we keep it acoustic because we wanted it to be just, just more a lighter feel and, and not overpowering the crowd, but welcoming the crowd to meet us in our sound. Um, and even with, like, with the type of music, the folk music, um, and when we write music, we try to write it in the old style. And we try to put in, I mean, I realize now, even writing a music that is, it's a fun, it doesn't explicitly have to have a, like a you know, life-changing message. But the music industry has become so dark now mm-hmm. that yeah. e- even writing music that is just good music is, in a sense, a witnessing to the light. I had one dad, kind of with tears in his eyes, he came up to me and he handed me this beautiful hand carved bowl and he had tears in his eyes and he said you don't know I made this for you because this is all I know how to do and you don't know what it means to me to be able to say to my son my 14 year old son hey if you want to be like that guy go ahead <laughs> and listen to his music wow. and he says because I literally I can't say that almost ever to him as a parent, I'm just looking for something that's not going to try to destroy his soul. But this negative, and there's just so much garbage out there. Um, so we feel a, a very strong mission to, you know, the true, the good, and the beautiful. Um, and my mom always said, if you do what's true, good, and beautiful, you can open up hearts and God can do the rest. Yeah. Like, it's, like Some people are called to evangelize explicitly. But I think there may be some people watching, too, that may feel a little guilty that they're not explicitly, you know, being explicit about Christ. Well, Christ, you know, we know from Elijah, he also worked in the whisper. Mm-hmm. And, and it's how we live our entire life that is the most important thing, because okay. um, as, as an artist, you know, I try to go to daily mass and say daily rosary. Um, and 
we really try to be very intentional in our prayer lives because we know that's what's going to be coming out of us, regardless of the genre yeah. that we play. And so that really informs our music a lot, too. Well, that's really good work that you're doing. And uh, I wish we had more time for the show. It's been real interesting talking to a rock star. <laughs> so <laughs> a Christian, intentional person that's making good music out there. So God bless you in your work and in the ministry you do. And, uh, and thank you again for being on Life on the Rock. Uh, definitely. And I also want to give an invitation. At, uh, I throw my own festival that has Catholic Mass on Sunday, August 13th, 14th, and 15th in Front Row, Virginia. It's called AppaloosaFestival.com. You can find it there. We'd love to have you come and experience music among friends. Okay. Well, thank you and God bless. God bless. Bye. I really enjoyed that interview with Dan. He's got a charisma mm -hmm. that even comes through yeah. in an interview. You can imagine what they're like on stage. And we've had them on the show before, and they are very high energy. And I thought he made a great point coming from his mother, you know, who had a sense of a Juilliard. She, she had to die to yourself. Yeah. You can't let this go to your head. And that's yeah. a good message for it all is. of us. Yeah, a lot of times our egos get in the way. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of places in our life, bands, family, work, uh, sports it can happen just about anywhere but yeah. I think just to just being thoughtful of others you know learning how to listen and again with bands I know you hear the greatest bands but then they break up because they can't get along and they'll never play together for who knows you know just right. probably something petty but it's just kind of you know learning to work together learning to listen you know and really again dying to yourself and really being at the service of others you know because we are called to serve and that's what yeah. you know was instilled in Dan but we're you know, we're called to serve God. Yeah, and then he had a strong sense of the mission, you know, to promote the true, mm -hmm. the good, the beautiful, to promote fellowship, yeah. music among friends, yeah. you know, their motto. And, um, and that, that could be a great good to help people open minds and hearts to God. So I think that's a great challenge for all of us to remember the mission, remember what we're about, what, and to be a servant, you know, to serve that greater good and that we have to get out of the way to do that. So our challenge this week is to leave your ego at the door. Mm. Be a servant, you know, in whatever field you work in. It can be used for the kingdom. You know, it can partic participate in the, the true, the good, and beautiful, you know, which is God himself. Mm. So leave your ego at the door, serve him in the vineyard, and go out there with great boldness and energy. May our Heavenly Father shine his face upon you. May he give you his peace. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We'll see you next week on Life on the Rock. Roadsides are leaving me all confused But I figure it can't be worse than yesterday I got one on my left and one on my right Two angels locked in a 12-round fight And I'm wondering if it'll ever go away There are days when I trip and every root and stone I wake up in a boxcar all alone On a runaway train headed straight for Guantanamo Bay I've been down in the cellar and out at home and this close to having the towel thrown Then faded words come back and I hear them say My dad said, son, don't give up the fight It's a cold, hard night, but the sun will rise in the morning You gotta brush, brush off the dirt No matter how much hurt, it won't keep the wheels from turning Buttermilk sour. Gotta put your hand on a stone, figure out which is when. There's a time for a fight on the courtroom floor. The time is best right out the back door. You can always climb in through the kitchen window again. My dad said, son, don't give up the fight. It's a cold, hard night, but the sun will rise in the morning. You gotta brush, brush off the dirt. No matter how much hurt